Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the chair of the IFAS Board of Directors, Ambassador William C. Eco. Everybody take a seat, please. My name is Bill Eco, and I have the honor and privilege of serving as the board chair at IFAS. For the visually impaired, my, my uh, description would be I'm a white male in his late 60s with graying blonde hair. I still call it it's a little bit blonde. Tonight I'm wearing a dark suit and a tie with Ukraine colors. Thank you. So welcome, all of you, to the 2023 International Foundation for Electoral Systems Charles T. Manette Democracy Awards. Tonight, we honor the life and the legacy of Judy Human, mother of the disability rights movement. I'd like, I'd like to welcome members of the policy community here in Washington, members of the diplomatic community are here, our local partners from around the world are here, our generous sponsors and donors and their guests, and the family and friends of Judy Human, as well as the IFAS Board of Directors and our staff, including staff joining us this evening from Ukraine and Guyana. Many thanks for joining us. It is an honor and a privilege to support IFAS, to chair IFAS, and support the work that we do. And this year, we have three of my predecessors as board chair of IFAS retiring from the board. So I'd like to take a moment to recognize and thank them. Tad Devine, our immediate past chair, could not join us tonight, but Tad joined the board with me about nine years ago. Ken Blackwell, his predecessor as chair and presently co-chair, you'll hear from Ken a little later this evening, uh, has served the organization for many years. Known for his charm and eloquence, he puts me to shame. And you'll see that when he comes up later this evening. Don Schweitzer, former, another former chair, his term also ends this year. Don has been a mentor to me. He has led this organization for many years and served this organization for many years, and we're very grateful for his service. So please join me in thanking them for their service, their dedication to IFAS, and the work we do to build resilient democracies. I'd also like to recognize the family and friends and colleagues of IFAS's former board chair, Charles T. Chuck Manat, whose leadership we honor through the Democracy Awards. Michelle, Kathleen, we're glad you could join us this evening and glad the whole Manat team is here. IFAS also carries on the legacy of Chuck Manat by sponsoring two fellowships in partnership with the Electoral Integrity Project. The Charles and Kathleen Manat Fellowship is open to scholars from Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Nebraska, North Dakota, Ohio, Oklahoma, South Dakota, and Wisconsin. And the William and Kathy Hibble Fellowship is open to scholars from Arizona, Colorado, Idaho, Montana, Nevada, New Mexico, Utah, and Wyoming. These fellowships, which are open to masters, PhD, or JD students, or established academics, help advance cutting edge research in the fields of election and democracy. So we're grateful that we have the opportunity to offer those fellowships. Now I'd like to invite Tony Banbury, our CEO, to the stage. Tony. Thank you, Bill. 
Good evening, everyone. My name is Tony Banbury, and I'm the president and CEO. I have the honor uh, to be the president and CEO of the International Foundation for Electoral Systems. I'm a white man in his 50s, late 50s, but we'll call it 50s, uh, gray hair, wearing a dark suit, and I wish I'd thought to wear a tie with Ukrainian colors. Uh, I would like to join Bill in welcoming you all. Everyone here is a special guest tonight. Um, uh, Thank you for coming. I want to also uh, appreciate our, our sponsors uh, this evening, particularly Microsoft and Google, who have helped make this evening possible. Uh, I very much want to uh, pay appreciation to the Manat family uh, for all they've done and what Chuck Manat did for IFAS over the years. And uh, this award is obviously named in his honor. Uh, I want to thank our board. Uh, we had a fantastic board meeting today, and our board of directors is extremely strong, notwithstanding the departure of some uh, legendary former chairs and co-chairs. And uh, we couldn't do the work we do without the IFIS board. Uh, I would also like to uh, acknowledge uh, Judy's uh, widower, Jorge Pineda, who has joined us this evening. Thank you very much, Jorge, for being here. Together, we build resilient democracies that deliver for all. Uh, that's what we are all doing here this evening. That's what we all try and do in one way or the other every day. And that's also been IFAS's mission since 2019. Together, we build resilient democracies that deliver for all. It's a very short statement, but it says so much about us as an organization not just what we do, but who we are. Uh, together, we recognize that in this challenging world with democracy under assault in so many countries, no organization, no individual, no country can do it on their own, can do this work, can deliver results on their own. We know we need to do it with partners and we are deeply committed to those partnerships. Our bilateral government donors, represented by the United States, uh, USAID uh, and the State Department, um, other bilateral government donors, uh, our, our partner organizations, uh, International Republican Institute, National Democratic Institute, Center for International Private Enterprise, and others. Um, our technology partners, uh, with whom we're doing more and more work to find ways to have technology serve rather than undermine democracy, and our local civil society partners, three of whom are here with us today, and you'll hear more from Abia from Pakistan, Ganesh from Guyana, and Yulia from Ukraine. Uh, together we build resilient democracies. We all know that the autocrats around the world are innovating, they have a, 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 a big playbook, a well-developed playbook, and they are very good at uh, finding ways to undermine democracy. It's one of the big challenges for the democracy promotion community is finding ways to counter those authoritarians in their playbook. And IFAS has worked hard to develop through our Democ Democratic Resilience Lab uh, uh, an intellectual framework and a playbook for democracy organizations as a whole to counter rise in authoritarianism and disrupt autocratic collaboration. Uh, in the end though, elections are critical to all of this. As we saw on Sunday in Poland, despite a, a stacked deck against the opposition, we saw great results from the Polish elections, also in Ecuador. Uh, Together we build resilient democracies that deliver for all. That part is at the core of who IFAS is as an organization, for all. We passionately believe that every individual in society, every group in society must have equal access to the ballot box and to the political processes in their country. Uh, now I want to uh, highlight a special guest whose timing in arrival was just perfect. Shannon Green, right here, is the new and first head of USAID's new Democracy Rights and Governance Bureau. Uh, and when she was appointed, soon thereafter, she invited a number of presidents of democracy organizations in Washington to meet with her and hear her uh, vision for the bureau. And she shared the, the official vision for the new bureau is a world where freedom flourishes 
and democracy delivers for all, which sounds a lot like IFAS's mission. So I thought, oh, these folks really have their act together. So Shannon, the uh, Bureau's vision is IFAS's mission. If you need any help, you know where, where to find us. Um, and uh, this uh, mission of ours, and in a way vision of the DRG Bureau, together we build resilient democracies that deliver for all, was also Judy Human's quest building a society where all people, all people, including all people with disabilities, had equal rights and equal access. And uh, Judy was a trailblazer. Uh, she uh, did uh, not see any obstacles she couldn't overcome, from New York school systems to uh, echelons of power in Washington, boardrooms and foundations, the World Bank, uh, she broke down barriers, she inspired, uh, she paved the way for so many others to uh, do the work that was necessary to promote these values that we all so deeply cherish. And we, IFAS is honored to be here this evening to recognize Judy's legacy and to uh, share it all with you. So thank you all for being here again. We're going to show a video produced by the Ford Foundation on Judy's life now. So please direct your attention to the screens. Judy Human, you are an amazing and unrepentant badass. Judy, known as the mother of the disability rights movement, is introduced as NYU's 2021 commencement speaker. And I'm not the first person to tell you that. 1988, Judy addresses a joint House-Senate hearing on the Americans with Disabilities Act. People in our society have been raised with prejudicial attitudes that have resulted in extreme discrimination. Footage from one of Judy's YouTube videos, off-camera interviewer. Judy, what do you think is your biggest strength? Is that I'm a networker, I like to speak with people, and I like to help people. And what's your biggest weakness? That I'm a networker, I like to speak with people, and I like to help people. I'm Judy Human. I'm a white, disabled, motorized wheelchair user. I wear glasses. When I was 18 months old, I had polio. Photos of Judy as a child with leg braces. An adult Judy rolls onto stage at TEDx Mid-Atlantic. This was a time when my family really began to realize what disability meant to some people, fear. When Judy's family enrolled her in school, Education officials claimed she was a fire hazard. They told us not to worry because the Board of Education, in fact, would send a teacher to my house. And they did for a total of two and a half hours a week. But for good behavior, they threw in an occupational therapist who taught me that very essential skill of cross-stitching. Despite this, Judy went on to graduate from college. And at 22, she applied for a license to teach in New York City. The Board of Education denied Judy, specifically because she used a wheelchair. Young Judy to a news reporter. I'm really tired of having to be a second-class citizen. And so, Judy Human sued the Board of Education. This is a really important time in my life because it would be the first time that I really would be challenging the system. And Judy Human won. She became the first wheelchair user to teach in New York City. And Human versus the Board of Education was the first disability civil rights case ever brought to federal court. Judy went on to found Disabled in Action and advocate for the independent living movement globally. In 1972, when President Nixon vetoed the Rehabilitation Act, which prohibits discrimination on the basis of disability in programs funded by federal agencies, Judy set out to claim her rights. Disabled in Action decided to have a demonstration in New York City in front of Nixon headquarters. Film strips show people with different disabilities gathering. We decided that we were going to sit down in the street and we were going to stop traffic. Footage and photos show traffic gridlock. There were only 50 of us, but basically, with the one street, we were able to shut the city down. We protested. Nixon signed it. Then the regulations that needed to be promulgated to implement that law had not, in fact, been signed. And so we demonstrated. Judy was one of the leaders of the historic 504 sit-in in San Francisco. A diverse group of people with and without disabilities take over the federal building. Judy speaks to government officials. We want the law enforced. 
We want no more segregation. And I would appreciate it if you would stop shaking your head in agreement when I don't think you understand what we are talking about. After almost a month, the longest occupation of a federal building in history, 504 was signed. It was the first federal civil rights protection for people with disabilities. Judy went on to influence global disability rights policy, impacting millions of lives. She worked in both the Clinton and Obama administrations, the World Bank, and with various sectors, including philanthropy. Judy, during her time as a senior Ford Fellow, addresses Foundation staff. There have been a lot of efforts over the last 30 years to really get the donor community to acknowledge that you can't address social injustice without including disabled people. One of Judy's YouTube videos. Judy, where are we? We're in our apartment, Jorge's hey, in my apartment. Which photo makes you smile the most? The photo of Jorge and myself the day we got married. Judy and Jorge Pineda, also a wheelchair user, kiss at their wedding ceremony in 1992. What would you like to be remembered for? My compassion and fight for change. And Judy, what would you like people to know about the disability movement? It's becoming more powerful. Disabled people are feeling prouder and speaking up, uh, recognizing their disability is a part of who they are. You know what I love about New York? The crowds. Judy addresses the crowd at the NYU commencement. This movement is made up of thousands of people, and you are many of them. No one person ever creates a movement. Images that show Judy's activism throughout her lifetime with fellow activists and government officials all over the world. In her apartment, Judy dances, spinning in her wheelchair while holding hands with a friend. There you go. You learned it here. Judy Human, December 18, 1947 to March 4, 2023. Production credits appear on screen. For a full list of credits, please review the downloadable transcript. The video ends with the Ford Foundation logo. Okay, fair. Uh, Judy was the mother of the disability rights movement, but she was also a field marshal in the battles that have been fought uh, for decades now. She brought up many generals and foot soldiers in those battles, and we have one of the leading generals of that uh, fight here uh, with our IFAS colleague, Virginia Atkinson, who's built up an international program of IFAS activities around the world, working with fantastic civil society partners. Uh, we are so grateful to Virginia for her work uh, and making IFAS a leader on the rights of people with disabilities and uh, their access to political and electoral processes. And we're so proud and honored to be joined by three of our civil society partners. I'll turn it over to Virginia now to introduce our partners. Thank you, Tony. Um, I am a white woman in my early 40s. I have light brown hair and blue eyes. And today I'm wearing a navy and maroon dress with a navy jacket and a gold necklace. Um, and I am really excited to be here with three friends tonight on this stage. Um, all of us either knew Judy or knew of Judy and, and were impacted by her work. Um, we're gonna hear a little bit from, from each of our colleagues. First, Abia Akram, who is the CEO of the National Forum of Women with Disabilities in Pakistan, and also the Program Director of STEP, the Special Talent Exchange Program. Abia has done a lot of work with the Election Commission in Pakistan uh, to, to push them <laughs> forwards in terms of implementing the UN Disability Rights Treaty and international standards on elections. And Abia has also done a lot of work around women with disabilities, in particular around gender-based violence. Um, so really excited to be with you. And Abia was actually one of the last people that Judy interviewed in her podcast. If you haven't seen Judy's podcast, I'd recommend you check that out, especially Abia's episode. Then we're next gonna hear from Ganesh Singh, who is from the Guyana Council of the Organizations of People with Disabilities. Uh, Ganesh and I met for the very first time earlier this year in Georgetown, Guyana. 
And probably the second sentence that Ganesh said to me was, do you know Judy Human? <laughs> um, so Ganesh, you didn't have the chance to meet Judy, but still was impacted by her work and influenced by her. And in Guyana, Ganesh is at the forefront of the movement um, around including young people with disabilities, in particular, in political life. And Ganesh has also done, for the very first time, some research on indigenous people with disabilities. That's never been done in the country before, and Guyana has a lot of indigenous populations that are excluded from participation in political life. And then lastly, we'll hear from Yulia Satchuk, who is the uh, founder and CEO of Fight for Right, which is a disability rights organization in Ukraine. Before the recent full-scale invasion, Yulia's team and her work focused entirely on advocacy, right? And trying to get laws aligned with UN international standards. Uh, she did a lot of work around political leadership, in particular of women and girls with disabilities. And more recently, Yulia and her organization have pivoted their work to focus on uh, recovery and reform in Ukraine and making sure that people with disabilities are at the center of that. So I will turn it over to Abia, who will speak for a few minutes about her work, then Ganesh, and then Yulia. Please, Thank Abia. you. Thank you very much, Virginia. It's so honored to be part of this discussion today. I'm Abia Akram from Pakistan. I'm wearing the black dress. I'm the wheelchair user with extra speed in my wheelchair. And I'm wearing the pink jacket. Thank you so much. Thanks to the IFS for inviting us and be part of this discussion. I'm really honored and be part of uh, the panel to talk about Judy's human legacy and the work she has contributed to carve the path for millions of the people. And she was my mentor. I learned a lot from her. Like whenever I met her, she had a space and the connection that gives you the honor and also the connectivity because you always ask, how are you? And we just respond, yes or no, okay. But then she asked again, close to touch the hand, holding the hand, looking in the eyes and asking again, how are you feeling? And that connection given me the strength, the power and the attitude like we feel more confident that we have to do the work. We have to serve the community out there. I'm also like want to say thanks to the IFS because we have been working closely in Pakistan since 2009. We know 10 to 15 percent of the total population are persons with disability. 50 percent of them are women and girls with disability, and more than 80 percent from the global south. Still, people are struggling for their basic rights of education, health, getting access to the justice, facing gender-based violence, sexual harassment, all those challenges faced by persons with disabilities. And when we started working in the disability sector back in 1997, we tried to change that mindset from the charity and the medical approach to the human rights perspective. And first time when I met with Judith, we realized we are not alone in the movement. We have a global connection and the support which she has been providing to all over the world. And that connection has given us more strength from the human rights perspective. And we started working with IFAS. That was a long journey of learning, sharing experiences, how we shifted that mindset from the advocacy on a light platforms. We talk about the inclusive electoral reforms. We talk about the inclusive democracy. And that was the important point to work with the stakeholders, like the government, Election Commission of Pakistan, and at the same time, engaging grassroots level organizations of persons with disability. So they can build their capacities on the election, on knowing their right of choice, how they can be sit on the table 
to raise their voices, how they can be in the platform out at all levels to contribute. And at the same time, we passed the first ever legislation in Pakistan following the American Disability Act. And we also worked together with the organizations for the implementation. Because Judy always said, if you have the legislation without teeth, that will not going to work. We need the teeth to bite. So at least we have the real implementation of the policies of the legislation and that gives us the seat on the table to talk about it and have a dignified life for persons with disability. We were very happy to have the sustainable development goals, references on disability, but still unfortunately many of us in the room knows that we are still off track. The time is not with us, but we have to take the commitments. We have to bring the change in the society so everyone can live equally and have an equal seat and talk on the leadership roles and have a dignified life. And I would say like nothing about us without us. The legacy Charlotte is also here. I think we have all that support and that stakeholder in collaboration with IFES, with USAID and everyone. We will continue the legacy which Judy Human have unfortunately left in this point. But we will continue and try to work together with the young people with disabilities around the globe to change the systems. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Avia. Ganesh? Thank you very much, Virginia. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's an honor, and I must thank IFES for this opportunity to be here as we celebrate and recognize the work that this remarkable human being, Judy Juman, would have done in helping to transform the disability landscape. She was pivotal, as most of you would know, in moving the disability movement from a charity approach um, to one where persons with disabilities are viewed through the human rights lens. My work is profoundly impacted by Judy Human's legacy. A lot, a lot of what I do is as a result of her inspiration. She would have broken barriers, she would have influenced policy, and most of all, changed perceptions. And in my work, and the work of the Ghana Council, in Ghana, that is what we do. We were at the forefront in advocating for the implement sorry, the enactment of a disability legislation, and that was done some years ago. Um, we are at the forefront currently in advocating for a more inclusive society. And we take that in, in many, um, from different, many different angles, including political participation. And on a daily basis, we work to change perceptions, the negative perceptions of persons living with disabilities. Judy would have blazed a trail that we as disability rights advocates are now traveling on. Many of us are not as strong, um, not as bold as Judy to, to, to blaze different trails. So we travel the one that she would have blazed for us. And the work that I as an advocate and my organization will continue to do will continue that legacy, shine a bright light um, of Judy's legacy. Because if we don't, a lot of what she fought for would just go to the wayside. Because we still, we still haven't achieved an inclusive society that Judy fought for. Yes, we have achieved so much with the Convention on the Rights of People with Disabilities. Persons with disabilities have more opportunities and so on. But we still, are not seen as equal citizens. And I think that's, that is what she wanted the most. And that is where us as advocates globally um, need to continue her legacy. So disability advocacy, um, you know, it's Judy's legacy. It was her passion. It is my passion. And it's something I will do until I take my last breath. And it will be something I do to continue her legacy. Thank you. Thank you, Ganesh. Yulia? Yes, thank you, Virginia. I'm a white woman wearing black dress and glasses 
and I have bracelet made from the last steel produced in Mariupol in Ukraine. And I'm very honored to talk today about Judy Human and her influence on my own path and Ukrainians with disabilities. We know Judy as a mother of the global disability rights movement, but at the same time, she was sister and dear friend for thousands of disability activists around the world. And she was a role model for millions of girls and women with disabilities worldwide, and for me as well. And she was very often the only strength which I had during the most challenging moment in my disability life and work. She inspired me, she taught me, and she gave me hope that disability inclusive democracy in Ukraine is possible and that we can reach it in one moment. She was our power, power of disability movement and power which is very often is not expected from disability movement. Such power and strong will wasn't expected from Fight for Right, Ukrainian organization of people with disabilities, most of whom are women and girls with disabilities which I led. It wasn't expected in the first day of the full-scale Russian invasion against Ukraine when without any support from big international humanitarian organization, we started to evacuate people from the hottest spots. We started to deliver medicines and other life-saving goods to the places where it's not possible to get to. We started to provide accommodations and all necessary life-saving support. We built case management system. We built a unique emergency disability-led response in the world. And all of these 601 days, our team work around the clock tirelessly, and we will not stop until Ukraine wins. And doing this, we are following Judy's example to be with your community and to help your community. And without Judy, this work wouldn't be possible because from the beginning of the war, she supported us. She empowered me and our team how to fight for our lives, how to fight for our rights and how to survive. I remember our, one of the, our last phone conversations and we were talking about harsh winter in Ukraine and support which people with disabilities in Ukraine required. And I remember this feeling which I had that I was talking with someone who is really connected to all Ukrainians with disabilities, who really knows the problem. And she helped us a lot. She was calling international community to help to react appropriately. She was every moment when we need her. And our organization in our work is influenced by American movement, disability movement, veterans movement, and remarkable example of Judy Human. Until now, she is, is the biggest strength for me to believe that prosperous and really democratic Ukraine with disability inclusive democracy is possible. And with that, with my team, I continue to fight for every person with disability in Ukraine can be heard and be included, can fight for our rights and can roll for the Judith Disability Revolution. Thank you. Thank you so much, Avia, Ganesh, and Yulia. It's very clear that Judy's legacy lives on in all of the work that you're doing. 
And I am really honored tonight to be able to announce the recipient of IFAS's 2023 Charles T. Minot Democracy Award, Judy Human, and also to welcome so many of her friends and family with us tonight. I met Judy about 12 years ago when she had first started at the State Department in her new role there. And in her, her positions at the State Department and at the World Bank, she traveled the globe, <laughs> cajoling governments to implement international disability rights standards and supporting the work of advocates like Abia, Ganesh, and Yulia. Um, earlier this year, though, she found herself in, in a new place, row 35 of the New York Times crossword. <laughs> and in crossword puzzles, in biographies about Judy, at award ceremonies like this one, Judy is often described as a trailblazer and a force of nature, a fierce, tireless advocate. And she is absolutely all of those things. Um, but to those of us, and admittedly there are quite a few <laughs> that are in her rich inner circle, she is also mischievous and nurturing. She was late night phone calls and early morning texts, <laughs> heads nodding, yes. Um, she was uh, the brunch at, at uh, Lily's here in DC and tea at the Willard. And she was always the very first one with her phone out to schedule the next time that we would get together. She was a vibrant purple coat. For those of you that know her, she was, she was never seen without her purple coat. Um, she was a networker extraordinaire, as you heard from that video, it's a definite fact. <laughs> um, and she was my mentor as well, and my co-conspirator, and my friend. Um, so I miss her deeply, and I know that many of you in the room tonight feel the same way. <laughs> um, and in addition to, of course, Jorge, um, Judy's husband. So I would like to invite Jorge up on the stage to accept the 2023 Charles T. Minot Democracy Award on behalf of Judy. IFIS is honored to uh, present our 2023 Charles T. Manat Democracy Award to Judy Human uh, and present it to you, Jorge oh, Pineda. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you'd like to. <laughs> Thank you to everybody. I really appreciate all this wonderful team. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, I love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. And thank you, Abia and Ganesh and Yulia, for your inspiring remarks. Uh, now I'd like to please invite everyone to enjoy your, your dinner uh, and the rest of the evening. On the way out, please do make sure you pick up a, a gift bag. It will have uh, a book about Judy, Being Human. Uh, and I highly commend it to, to each of you. Thank you. Please turn your attention to the screens for a short video. Change never happens at the pace we think it should, as disability rights leader Judy Human famously said. It happens over years of people joining together, strategizing, sharing, and pulling all the levers they possibly can. Around the world, one out of six people experience significant disability. That's 1.3 billion people. Yet, people with disabilities remain underrepresented in political and public life and encounter barriers to participating in electoral and political processes. 
Since 1987, IFIS has been committed to making that change. Whether it is in Ukraine, where war cannot stop our efforts to expand accessibility and inclusion, or in Senegal, Tunisia, and Armenia, countries where IFAS developed the first sign language lexicons of electoral terms, or in Guyana, where our partners led get out the vote efforts. While democracies around the world face unprecedented challenges, these changes, driven by our local partners, are what give us confidence in the future. For a world where all people can safely participate in civic and political life on an equal basis. Together, we build resilient democracies that deliver for all. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage the co-chair of the IFAS Board of Directors, Ambassador J. Kenneth Blackwell. Good evening. My name is Ken Blackwell. I'm a 75-year-old black man with a receding hairline, <laughs> searching for the podium to put my notes on. I hope everyone has enjoyed their dinner and the company of their fellow guests. I've had the great privilege of serving on the IFAS board for over a decade and a half, including terms as its chair and its co-chairman. As my friend and colleague Bill Echo shared, my term on the board ends this year. However, I am proud of how the organization has grown over the years to meet the challenges of today and the future, broadening its work into areas such as anti-corruption, democratic resilience, technology for democracy, and inclusion. On behalf of my fellow board members, I want to thank you for joining us to honor the life and legacy of Judy Human. My wife of 55 years, Rosa, and I have had the privilege of sitting at the table with Jorge, and we in fact thank you for your partnership with Judy and all the work that you've done on the front lines. <clears throat> I, you know, I think it's most appropriate that we honor Judy's memory as a continuing blessing to humanity. She could have chosen to be a sideline sitter, but she didn't. She chose to be on the front lines, and she chose to be a person who recognized the dignity of others. As a young man in Cincinnati, I had the privilege of being associated with a Jewish scholar, Abraham Heschel, and he, in fact, turned a phrase for me that represented what Judy stood for in her efforts. He said that respect discovers the dignity in others. And we've been blessed to have not only Judy, but those who we saw on stage this evening, who through their willingness to expose themselves to the challenges of our time, they've gained the respect and they've given the respect to the dignity of others. Tonight's celebration was enriched by your presence and your fellowship, and I hope that you enjoyed your table's company. I would like to express my gratitude to the REACH staff and the IFAS colleagues, my IFAS colleagues and the volunteers who have worked tirelessly to make this event a success. An undertaking such as this requires a team effort and I thank you. You know, I think it's important that again, we single out those who were on the stage, our colleagues from 
Guyana, Pakistan, and Ukraine, again, for sharing what they're doing on the front lines. I want to thank all of you, your guests and your friends, your guests and friends, for spending this evening with us. Tonight's celebration, again, was enhanced by your involvement. Lastly, I would like to express my special gratitude to Beacon Press, who enabled us to include Judy's autobiography, as Tony announced, in your, in your gift bag. I hope that you're able to accept the gift bag and make sure that you go into the life and legacy of Judy and her, the movement that she led. But this evening is not quite over. We have a special guest tonight, Lachi. Lachi is a recording and performing artist, personal, personality, award-winning community leader, and host of PBS's America Masters segment, whose cultural activism, her cultural activism has landed her spots in national ads, discussions with the White House and the UN, and appearances on the Grammys and Barbie world premiere red carpets. Legally blind, Lashi uses her performance, her, her platform in music, telling stories and fashioned to amplify the identity, pride, and, and, and force of the disability culture. Lachi, joining us tonight to sing Lift Me Up, her tribute to Judy Human. Lachi. Hello, ooh, that never gets old. <laughs> Hi, my name is Lachi, L-A-C-H-I, Lachi like Versace. You know, I say that all the time. If anyone knows anyone from Versace, just hook a sister up. So I am she, her. I am a black woman with cornrows. I'm wearing pink heels, pink dress, pink rose in my hair, and a pink glam cane. And I identify as blind. So I want to just talk really quickly about Judy. So I, I had two women on my bucket list that I always wanted to meet. One of them was Rachel Maddow, because, you know, the hair. And the other was Judy Human. And the first time I ever heard of Judy Human was when Ali Stroker played her on Drunken History on Comedy Central, 2019. Very fun show, very interactive. Uh, I got very drunk watching it. Um, and I was very excited because it was the first time I heard about disability advocacy. And it was the first time I saw a badass woman advocating for bringing people together and bringing disability culture to the mainstream. Are we allowed to say badass? <laughs> and applause for badass? This really is DC. <laughs> um, so you can imagine my surprise when she called me a year later and said she was a fan of mine and she wanted my music to be part of her podcast. And from that point forward, we became really, really good friends. Um, she would call me at all hours of the night whenever she felt like it, because when Judy calls you, answer. And she'd give me advice, she'd give me connections with people, and she'd make me sing on speaker to all of her friends all the time. And it was embarrassing for everyone involved, and I'm sure including her. When she passed away, it was really hard for a lot of us. I mean, she was a mentor to a bunch of us, you know, new wave disability advocates. Um, and so a bunch of us from Ramped, recording artists and music professionals with disabilities, an organization, we, we got together and we made this beautiful tribute, Lift Me Up. Everyone from Galen Lee to James Ian to April Rose to Kulik to Day Al Muhammad and to, of course, Ali Stroker. We got together, we made this beautiful tribute, which quickly became this sort of disability pride anthem of 2023. 
got on the radio, got on MTV, got on BET, got on all sorts of places because it was about bringing disability together, lifting folks up, and bringing disability culture to the mainstream. So I'm really excited to share that song, that tribute for Judy with you folks today. But before I sing it, I will say one last thing. I actually ended up, by hook or crook, getting two tickets to check out Rachel Maddow <laughs> to see her opening night for her book tour. That opening night is tonight. But Rachel can wait. Because Judy called. And when Judy calls, you answer. I hope you guys enjoy this song, Lift Me Up. spoke up we would laugh about our dreams and the world we wanted to see and who I needed to be for the world I wanted to see rain could beat against my window but you drown it out be the darkest depths of winter but your light shines down when the world got Spinning, feeling stuck here on the ground. You lift me up. You lift me up when the days get way too rough and the stars don't shine enough. It's you who lifts me up. It's you who lifts me up when I'm taking off my gloves. Cause I'm all out of love. You lift me up. Yeah. A million words, you always draw me in. Thanks for being that voice. Thanks for being a friend when you've gone away. You're never really gone, cause you give me the strength to carry. darkest depths of winter but your light shines down when the world got my head spinning feeling stuck here on the ground you lift me up you lift me up when the days get way too rough and the stars don't shine enough it's you who lifts me up baby it's you who lifts me up when I'm taking off my gloves, cause I'm all out of love. You lift me up, you lift me up, you lift me up. Yeah. When the days get way too rough, and the stars don't shine enough.
Thank you, Lachi, for an inspirational performance. I want to pay special recognition to our two champion sponsors, Microsoft and, and Google. Thank you for being partners with us in our efforts and our enterprise. If you don't believe in the Bible as the word of God, take it as a historical reference book. In Psalms 3, there's a passage. If the foundation be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? But in John, there is something that I think is inspirational to us all. It says, those who would do evil love the darkness. IFAS as an organization and each and every one of you have had the courage not only to light candles, but to not hide your candles under a bushel. You have punched holes in the darkness of our time and across the globe. And as a consequence of our organizational example and your individual example, we give hope not only to democracy, but individuals who strive to be recognized and respected for their right to be free. I want to say to you all, good night, stay safe, and thank you again for being with us. And there is a dessert reception to partake in right now. Thank you very much.